All right, students, I want to talk about writing scientific conclusions, specifically using the CER format. Here's the essential question. How do we write a lab conclusion using CER? Let's start with something a little fun. Let's watch this video together. I apologize for the low quality sound. Please check the link in this assignment to find the direct link to this video if you would like. <laughs> Honey, have you seen our cat? No. All right, a scientifically minded person might look at this video and ask themselves, what happened to the cat? I challenge you to pause this video now and write a conclusion statement based on what you observed. All right, if you've unpaused the video, let's go through di the different parts of writing a conclusion. Now we call this CER or claim, evidence, and reasoning. A claim is a statement that restates the purpose or the essential question and then answers that question concisely. Evidence is specific observed data used to support the claim and can either be qualitative or quantitative. And then reasoning is a scientific explanation, basically supporting your evidence, supporting your claim and explaining the evidence and how they support each other. Let's go through each of those individually. Let's start with the claim. Now, when you write a claim, the claim should repeat the purpose. We do this to let people know what we're talking about. You don't just run up to somebody and yell a claim. You usually give a little bit of background of what's going on and what you were doing. Now, claims are typically concise. They're short, they're to the point. So they don't really include the evidence or reasoning at this point. Therefore, we don't use words like because here because we're just trying to get the point across right away. If you look at the lower left-hand corner, there's some examples of some sentence starters you can use when writing your own claims. These are optional. You do not have to use these exactly. Let's go to our Doritos commercial and let's take a look at an example of a claim. One could write, our teacher asked us how, what happened to the cat in a YouTube video. That's restating the purpose. Now the claim is, we believe that the cat was murdered by the dog. Short, concise, and to the point. I want to give you some examples of low quality claims. Now these were taken from previous labs that we've done. And I want to let you know right now that all of the examples I have in this presentation are not calling anybody out. In fact, a lot of people made similar mistakes. I didn't copy any one person. This was made by myself after of what I've seen a lot of people do. Now, one of the labs we did was the flame test lab, and it says, how do Bohr models help explain how various substances react to a flame test? That was the essential question. In some examples of a claim, some people wrote, in this activity, we were supposed to see what colors were produced by different solutions. Different solutions produce different colors. The reason this is a low quality claim is because it's not really related, it's not directly related to the purpose. It's what you did, but if you recall, the essential question or the purpose was to figure out how flame tests explain Bohr models, how Bohr models and flame tests relate to each other, and that's not mentioned here at all. Here's a second example of a low quality claim. It says, in this lab, we learned how Bohr models help explain how various substances react to a flame test. It's off to a good start, but it's missing the actual claim. So this person took the essential question and rewrote it in a way for the claim, which is a great idea, but they didn't actually make a claim to, to anything. All right, let's jump to evidence. El evidence can be qualitative or quantitative observations. A qualitative observation is a quality. So that's where the word comes from, qualitative. And typically it's one, it's observations you make with your senses, like what you see or what you observe and those types of things. Quantitative observations are observations you get with, with using scientific instruments like measurements. Usually quantitative is quantity and includes numbers like length or temperature or mass. Now evidence should be specific results from your experiment or your experience that you just had that you're relating the claim to. Again, the lower left hand corners are some sentence starters you're welcome to use. All right, going back to our Doritos commercial, let's take a look at an example of an evidence statement. In the video, we saw the dog bury pet tags, a missing cat poster, and the dog bribing the man with Doritos while saying you didn't see nothing. So we're just concisely giving the evidence that we have, and we're going to explain that evidence in the next part with reasoning. 
evidence. Before we do that, let's talk about low quality evidence. Or let's give an example of this. Again, not calling any student out. This is just common things that we saw that could be improved upon. The essential question for this one was, what properties help classify metals, non-metals, and metalloids? And some students said, in this lab, we tested a bunch of different substances by putting acid on them. This is what happened in the lab, but it's not specific data or evidence. Ideally, we need specific data. What samples did you put acid on and what results happened to those samples that we can eventually use to support our claim? All right, the last part is reasoning. This is where we explain how or why evidence supports our claim. This is where we can include some background or some prior knowledge, especially scientific principles and terminologies that we've recently been learning. A lot of this could be used to pull, pull from the pre-activity research section or from our recent notes or practices. Again, the lower left-hand corner of the screen has some sentence starters you're welcome to use, but let's take an example from our video. The cat was missing, as indicated by the poster, because the dog killed the cat and is covering up the murder. The dog is seen digging in the dirt with the pet tags to hide the body of the cat, a typical behavior of murderers who do not wish to get caught. If there are witnesses to a crime, often they are bribed to keep quiet, which is also what happened in the situation when the dog gave the man Doritos. So we're taking and we're applying our evidence to our claim, and we're giving reason and scientific reasoning to explain why we believe they fit together. All right, here's a low quality reasoning. Here's an essential question. This isn't pulling from any of the labs that we're gonna do, but how is a Newton's third law applied to a rocket? A student said, because I did this activity, I understand the concept of Newton's third law better. This is not related to the purpose. Now, this is a little challenging because yes, ultimately we're trying to get this student to learn about Newton's third law. But if you read the essential question, that's not the direct purpose of this lab. You're never gonna use a reasoning statement or you're never really going to use learning a concept as a direct purpose. This reasoning is also missing scientific explanations. They threw in the word Newton's third law, but they didn't explain the law. And they also didn't explain how it supports their claim or how their evidence supports their claim, which is one of the most important parts. CER is very powerful, which is why we want you guys to use it. CER provides a basis to test the validity of statements. In this world nowadays, people have so many different claims, but if they don't have evidence or reasoning to support it, that's not good. For example, we can check the validity of many claims from the coronavirus pandemic that's most recent. Many people claim that masks are unsafe and they even provide reasoning because they cause CO2 buildup. But when we actually go and check the evidence against that claim, we to find that that evidence doesn't support the claim. CER is also powerful because it provides insight into further exploration of a subject. Going back to our masks example, we can further study this, this process. Are cloth masks more effective than net gaiters against COVID-19? We can go and collect more evidence to support one way or the other. The last thing I want to say is just kind of generally about CER and claims. Finding out your claim is wrong is not important to a scientifically minded person. We're going to find out our claim is wrong often. And that's the big part of science, trying something out, making a claim and collecting evidence against it. Now, what is important to a scientifically minded person is how you react to new data. Right? If you find out that something is, is, does not support a claim, how do you react? Do you change your stance? Also, what further evidence can you provide? That's also what matters. You know, if we find something out, we, we need to go collect more data and go find more information to further support the truth and further support scientific matters. All right, good luck.